Hey, it's Under the Debt, and I'm Ken Hyatt, and I'm out here looking at radio frequency interference. And I've invited Dylan, who's got some super cool equipment here, and he's going to go ahead and talk a little bit about one of the things that's really intriguing to me, interference hunting. So Dylan, thanks for being here. What do you got? Well, I've got a spectrum analyzer here running and I've got a directional antenna and I'm just sweeping the area to determine you know, what interfering signals are out here. Right now I'm centered right on the 800 megahertz band, sweeping 400 megahertz, and I'm looking at three distinctive LTE signals and I've got also an interfering signal here over on the right. So we have something we know and we have something that could be a nefarious signal from some space station something. <laughs> exactly. Well, there's so many potential transmitters out there yes. today that could cause interference on either cellular or TV stations or a multitude of wireless transmitters. So in previous episodes, we looked at a couple devices and I would call those devices Internet of Things. How does interference hunting helping us understand how these devices work, but also protect them from signals. Interference hunting is really an art and a science. Network operators employ teams to go out and hunt for interference that's caused by wireless devices. Either the device has failed and it's emitting a signal in a channel that it shouldn't be emitting in, mm -hmm. or it's an older device that doesn't comply with the spectrum with how it's allocated today or it could just be a broken transmitter or a, a, a down cable line somewhere causing interference. Interference of things is a major driver. There's millions and millions more transmitters out there. And so this is a huge problem that's becoming even more of a problem as, as the years go by. So as we get more involved with Internet of Things, we have to also pay attention to the interference of things. Exactly. So there are standards out there that we have to make devices our device to. Mm -hmm. What is the process that we have to go through after we've done our interference hunting to help design our device to make it work. Teams need to be able to understand the compliance standard that they need to test to. Right. They need to be doing some diagnostic and troubleshooting uh, while they're in the design, early design phases. And then they need to be doing some pre-compliance. Maybe they need to test to a specific standard. It's regulated by both the government and also different industries. It depends on the device that you're testing for. And so EMC and EMI compliance testing is all part of that. That every electronic device has to pass before it can go to market. Thanks, Dylan. So what we've done is we've set the stage. We're gonna go ahead and go into a specialized room inside. We're gonna take a look at a device. We're gonna take a look at the signals that actually affect that device or could affect that device. If you have any comments, go to our social channels and put them in there. Your input is very important to us. Dylan, let's head inside. All right.